Before I get into this story time, don't forget to thumbs up this video. Make sure you do that now. Thumbs up this video. Make sure you share this video. Share the video. Share the video. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna hurt nothing to share nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Make sure your notification bell is on so every time Muscle and Marriage posts a video, you are notified and you are right here with us in the Double M Kingdom. Okay? Now we got that out the way. Let's get into this story time. Um, if any of y'all want to know what my shirt said, y'all can't see it, it say black is beautiful. And it's a green shirt, y'all. <laughs> but I thought it was so cute and I bought it at the rainbow. It was only seven bucks, so why not? It's a very interesting story how I became a nurse. I had been living in Orlando for now at this time about four or five years. Yeah, four or five years at the time. And, um... Me and my friend, we, we used to be rolling hard together. I mean, we had gold grills in our mouth. You know, we, we got the plates done. <laughs> we used to be hanging in the clubs real heavy. I mean, me and old girl used to be hanging out. You feel me? And um, one day she was like, man, I'm going to nursing school. And I'm like, that's what's up. You know, that's good for you. You know, I didn't want to do it. You know, I was just like, it's good for you. And um, it was so crazy because, you know, we get to the school. I'm outside smoking a black and mild, y'all. I know you look at me and say, did that pretty girl smoke? Yes, I did. But I stopped it. That's another story time. <laughs> yes, I'm outside smoking a black and mild. The things we do when we're young and just... Mm. Anyways. So I'm outside and my friend is in there taking her T's test. And for those who don't know what a T's test is, it's like a combination of science, science and math. And you have to score a certain number on the test in order to get approved to go in the program. You know, it's almost like a competency test. You know what I'm saying? To make sure that you're able to, you know, would you, be a, would you make a good candidate for this program? Because they want you to pass. Because if schools have a low passing rate, you know, they can lose their accreditation, they can lose their um, financial aid funding, all kinds of things can happen. If you lose that, then you lose a lot of students and then the school shuts down. But anyway, uh, my friend was in there taking her test and it was $50 to take the test. So not only did you got to show that you're competent enough to be in this program, but we're going to charge you for the test too. So she's in there taking the test. I'm outside, you know, smoking my black, chilling, just waiting on her. You know, I'm chilling. I'm cool. You know, go in and take your test, girl. I'm good. I pre you know, I got your back. You know, I know you're going to do this thing. You know, all that kind of good stuff. And um, a lady walks up to me and she says, you need to be in there taking that test. Out of nowhere, she says to me. And she starts talking about God and, you know, how sometimes we don't realize what God is calling us to do. But she said she felt compelled to tell me that. Now, me, I was skeptical about um, her advice. And I was looking at her like, yeah, you work for the school. So, of course, you're going to tell me to be in there taking the test. Because that's another $50 y'all going to get out of somebody. <laughs> y'all know how we is now. So, anyway. <clears throat> I go in there. And, I, you know, ladies start telling me about the program and everything. And I'm listening to her. If I put, you know, listening to it, whatever, I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, but I'm still not interested. You know, like, thank you. But if, 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 I, if, if ever I'm interested, I'll come back to the school on my own accord. And, you know, I'll, I'll look you guys up. So I go back outside. And I'm sitting out there still chilling on the bench. And the lady come back again. She said, I'm not going to harass you. But I really feel like if you go in there and take that test, you're going to pass that test. So she just kept on talking to me and talking to me. She was so nice. So you could, I couldn't even be rude to the lady. Like, leave me alone. You harassing me. Because she was so nice. And I really felt like at this point, I felt like she was coming from a good place. 
So, um, I don't know what made me feel the way this came over me. Like, this lady really ain't trying to, you know, be negative. She really trying to tell you something. And I started thinking like, dang, you working as a CNA, you working as a tech, you around here doing PCM, you know, putting these people in holds and dealing with aggressive psychotic patients every day and wearing and tearing on your body physically, you know, like, man, you know, you ain't even making that much money doing it. So why not take the chance on this test and just see where it go? You know? So I go back inside and um I go ahead and tell the lady that's me and the lady, me and the lady both walk back inside together. We walk back inside together and I tell the lady, okay, I'm gonna take the test. So I pay my $50, I go in there and I take my test. And by the time I'm getting ready to go in there and take my test, my friend is already done with her test, but we hadn't saw each other yet. So she was looking for me. And the lady says, Your friend is taking the test too now. I got her to take it. She's like, Oh. You know, she was shocked because she knew I already had said I didn't want to do that, you know. And um, I came out and she was, my friend was out there waiting on me. She's like, she's like, how did you do? And I'm thinking, you know, you, you know, you passed, girl, I passed, girl, I passed. Because I did pass the test. And my friend was like, I didn't pass. And it kind of dampened me like, dang, I didn't even want to do this. I didn't even want to do this. How did I go in there and take the test and pass? And you just went in there and you didn't. This is something that you was you were so excited about. This is something that you had been talking about all week long. I mean, we was in the club and she was talking about, um, you know, taking this test and going to nursing school and becoming a nurse and things like that. And, you know, changing her life, you know, for the better as far as, you know, income wise and things like that. I'm the one who was sitting over there kind of like, oh, that's so good. But, you know, like I ain't really interested. And I started school the next week. The very next week I started school. And our relationship didn't suffer, but it kind of like we were going in two different ways because the program was so strenuous and, you know, you were pharmacology, you had all these different classes that you were taking, the things that you had to do, whatever. It was a lot on me, you know what I'm saying? So I really couldn't hang out with my friend like I used to. I really couldn't, um, you know, we couldn't do the things we used to do. We just couldn't. And so I met other friends, you know, while in the program, because of course, when you're around like-minded people and people are doing what you're doing, you tend to kind of gravitate towards them, you know, more so than anything. And so, you know, I became friends with other people like Rashonda. I met Corinne in the program, things like that. And, um, you know, I became a nurse and I just say, I say that, I tell that story to say this, that sometimes even when somebody is sharing with you their dreams and goals, sometimes God is speaking through them, telling them what you're getting ready to do. Because I, honest to God, I sat there and I really, really, really was not interested in going to nursing school. It never dawned on me to become a nurse. It was like, you know, I mean, when I got out of high school, I, I initially tried it because, you know, hey, Everybody was becoming nurses and things like that. And I took a couple of prerequisites for it. But actually going into a nursing program, like wanting to be a nurse, it was never a passion of mine. It was never nothing I really, really wanted to do like that. I never really put that out there. But I did know that I wanted to help people. I did know that much. I wanted to help people. And I wanted to be an encouragement to people. And I always said that I wanted to take whatever I did. I wanted to be helping massive amounts of people. And I want to do it on a huge platform. And that's why, you know, speaking and um, motivating people and encouraging people is so important to me because I know how it felt coming up. I felt like I needed that so much in my life all the time. I felt like I needed somebody to mentor me, to guide me, to help me. You know, my mom, she did the best she could. You know, she had four boys and one girl. And then my sister came along since so she had four boys and two girls. And um, I just always felt like I needed somebody that could really guide me and help me and, you know, give me advice and things like that. And a lot of times I never had that because I was always that for my friends. I was always that person somebody was calling and, you know, saying they really respected my opinion and they really would like to know what I think about something. And, I, it, you know, even when people would do that, I'll be like, man, they, they see that in me. You know, people see the gifts that you have better than you do sometimes, you know, and 
you have to really listen to that. You have to pay attention. My friend kept speaking about that nurse and she kept speaking it and speaking it and speaking it. And she kept talking that thing out loud and just speaking that thing in my life into existence. She kept speaking it to me. She kept talking about becoming a nurse and the benefits of being a nurse. And she just kept saying all these different things. I ended up going from not having nowhere to stay, from walking the streets three days in Orlando. I went from... You could, you could almost say homeless to, <laughs> like, they, like they say, homeless to Harvard. I mean, you could almost say that. Homeless to Melrose Place, honestly, because I got my nursing, I got my GPN, which is a graduate, your graduate nursing, which is meaning you are, you are basically, um, man, it makes me emotional a little bit, y'all. It really do. <sighs> I ain't gonna cry. I ain't gonna cry. Because God has been so good, you know? He really has. Um, let me just gather my thoughts for a minute, y'all. Man. When I think about how good he's been to me. Honey. When I think about how good he's been to me. Can't no devil in hell make me think nothing different. I done been through so much stuff. Baby, I'm built so tough. If I'll never, ever see or deal with anybody who don't mean me no good, honey, I promise you there's no feeling there. There's no love loss. There's no nothing. Because I've been through so much that I can't do nothing but keep excelling and exceeding my own expectations. I'm telling you. So when I got my graduate, um, my GPN, because I was, you know, basically scheduled to take my test so you can actually work somewhere. And um, there was only one place I knew of here in Orlando that allowed you to work as a graduate nurse, you know. And um, man, I'm telling you, I went and got that job and my life just started changing. It just started changing for the better. And then from there, I took my test. I passed my test. And I mean, I just I just flourished. I went on and on and on and on. And I had got, I, I went from having one job that I could barely hold on to. That was Brady fired me because I couldn't maintain the job plus go to school. I'm trying to work the overnight and then leave the job in the morning and go to my class. I just could keep maintaining that. It just it was it was it wasn't working for me. It wasn't because they wanted me to work five days a week, eight hour shifts on overnight. Get twenty two patients up in the morning by myself on a memory unit. Make sure they all change. Make sure they all dress, hair comb, and, and clothes. I couldn't keep that up, y'all. I couldn't keep that up. And I'm telling you, that morning when that don called me in his office to tell me they had to let me go because I can't you know be I can't be here. I'm um, getting everybody ready in enough time for breakfast, and I'm I'm too slow and I'm taking too long 22 patients 22 patients who barely can get up, only about five of them get them walk around their own on a memory unit the rest of them bed reading I gotta help get them up in the wheelchair by myself I gotta get them changed dressed everything when that man did that to me that thing hurt it hurt me y'all because I needed that job I needed that money I needed that but he gave me so much he gave, he gave me so much push when I said he gave me so much push, I said, man, I'm finna come out this thing swinging. I'm coming out swinging. I'm telling you, you can't, you, you, you gotta have a strong mind and you can't let nobody and no devil in hell stop you. You can't, you can't let nobody and nothing stop you. I'm telling you right now, because in that moment when he fired me, he gave me all the ammunition, all the drive, all the motivation I needed to keep pushing harder. And I said, I don't care what no, I don't care what nobody say. I don't care who won't help me. I'm going to do what I got to do to get where I got to go. I'm going to do what I got to do until I can do what I want to do. You can believe that. And I, um, I went through a lot of trials and tribulations. I really did. Um, dealing with that. But man, I tell you, when I got them nursing license, Man, I went and got three jobs. That's how many people wanted to hire me. I was working at a um, nursing home. I was working at a, um, I had a, I had a full-time job. I had a two PRN jobs. I was making so much money grinding and hustling and 
going here, going there, getting my money up and saving my bread. I was in such a good, 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 good position. And I'm telling you, nobody really wanted to help me. But God, to God be the glory. Everything worked out. Everything worked out. I'm telling you, it worked out. And that's why I know if I just stay consistent, stay focused, everything is going to continue to work out. Because I've already been around people that don't love me, don't care nothing about me. I already done been around people that want to see me fail. I already done been around people who envious of me and jealous of me. I done been around all that. So now it's up to me to show you what I'm going to do with all of that. Get back. Get back. Because, man, when I think about what I've been through and when I think about all that God has done for me, I won't complain. I won't complain. And that's why I say there's no room for me to be mad at anybody, to be envious of anybody. I love everybody. I truly do. Even the people that annoy me and get on my nerves, I love them too. Because we all have purpose. We all have a reason for our being. Whether we realize it or not while we're here on this earth, we do though. You know what I'm saying? And God loves us all. And when that man fired me and I saw him again at a job I was working, <laughs> it felt so good because he walked in the door to the place I was working. And I don't even think he remembered me as the tech that, you know, he had fired or whatever. I don't think he remembered me. And it was so crazy because he walked in and he was asking me, could he speak with the D.O.N. about a job? So obviously the place that he had fired me from had fired him, I think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it seemed like he had got fired because it was so crazy the way he was looking. Like he was looking kind of like desperate for a job. And he was really looking to get this interview done so he could see if he can get the job or not. Because he kept talking about it and talking about it. And I said, don't I know you from somewhere? He's like, no, I don't believe so. I said, mm, I think I do know you. I said, I do think I know you. And he kept on trying to play like he didn't know me. But I could tell by the way he was acting, he knew he knew exactly who I was. But I didn't say nothing at first. I didn't say nothing at first. And I didn't tell him who I was. I just went and got the D.O.N. The D.O.N. came out and she said, we're going to do your interview. She said, do you mind if my nursing supervisor um, sits in on the interview with, um, with me? Because I'm going to be, I'm going to be um, getting her feedback too on whether or not, you know, we should hire you and things like that. And if you qualify for the position. And I'm telling you, he almost turned pale white. It was like he saw a ghost. I'm telling you, it's like he saw a ghost. But you know what? I didn't try to do him any harm. I didn't try to get in that interview and listen in to what he had to say. And I didn't even try to make, try to, you know, steer her decision to not hire him. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I honestly, God, did not do that. I sat there. I listened. And when he was done, me and her talked. And, um, you know, I told her, at the end of the day, it's your decision. I didn't have anything bad to say about him because I know everybody needs a job. And even though you had did me harm, I wasn't going to return that to you. You know, that's why I know um, God is has shown me a lot over the years. And even though I'm still working on a couple other things that I need to work on in my personal life, I know God has worked on my heart a whole lot because I could have really messed that man over. And she basically told me that if I said no, she was saying no. <laughs> And, you know, he eventually didn't even work out anyway because he couldn't deal with the workload. I think he had been used to being a D.O.N. and working in the office. And, you know, he wasn't used to no grunt work or he had done it in so long. He wasn't interested in doing that no more. So, you know, he didn't stay. But needless to say, I, I still didn't try to do him any harm. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because, man, here I was, you know, didn't even want to become a nurse, but I ended up becoming one. You know, my friend spoke that into my life and I thank her for that. And then here it was, this man fired me, and here I was interviewing him now for a job. You know, it just goes to show you how God will take everything and bring it around full circle. You know, you'd be sitting there so down and out, you'd be feeling like, man, they got the best of me. Man, they tried to do me in. They tried to kill me. They tried to hurt me. They tried to take me out. You know, you'd be feeling like that. You'd be like, dang, 
You know, I was crying that day. I was hurting bad that day. My cell phone was off. My mom had to pay my cell phone bills. I can have a, I can make a phone call to her. You know what I'm saying? I was going through it down here in Orlando. I was going through it. I was going through it, y'all. But God said, he had me. He had me. He said, well, you only see one set of footprints in the sand. There I was carrying you. He was carrying me through. He was taking me through. You hear me? God was carrying me through that. Y'all, I'm not no preacher. And I try not to get into religious type conversations. But I am Christian. And I do know the glory of God and what he has done in my life and what he's done for me. And all I'm trying to say to you, whether you believe in God or not, all I'm trying to say to you is, don't you let nothing and nobody stop you. Don't you believe none of the lies people are saying about you. Don't you believe none of the doubt they're trying to inflict on you. Don't you believe nothing these naysayers out here saying, okay? Because they're liars. They're the liars. They're the ones not going to achieve anything. They're the ones jealous, envious, don't want to see you have nothing. Don't you let them lies dwell in you. Don't you let them lies get in your head. I'm telling you, I've been there, done that. And when I, and I, when I start, when I stop letting people and all their negativity block me, I start seeing blessings in abundance. You hear me? When I stop dating dudes that meant me no good and I said, Lord, send me a good man. And I sit back and just be, just be by myself and get to know Mandy, baby. That man came. That man came. He here. He here. <laughs> I wouldn't trade my keys for nothing in the world. I wouldn't trade them for nothing in the world. Because he unlocking everything in my life that the devil was trying to lock down, was trying to block me from. I wouldn't trade keys for nothing in the world. He has been a great support to me, a great friend to me. Man, it's like when I got with him, my life was already going pretty good. But God elevated it to another. God showed me, hey, I can make it even better. I'm going to give you somebody. To, I'm going to give you somebody you can grow with. Somebody you can build with. Somebody you can have so much more with. You ain't got to do this alone. And that's why I said, boy, when I when, when that man did that to me, like I said, when he fired me, he, he almost broke my spirit. It broke me down a little bit, you know. I My car was in. I forgot to tell y'all this. My car was even in the shop. My car was in the shop because I got in a car accident. I didn't have the money to fix my car, y'all. Didn't have the money to fix my car. My car was sitting in that man's shop for the longest time. Thank God he didn't try to sell my car or, you know, sell the parts of my car and all this kind of stuff. Thank God he didn't do that. But um, my car sat in that shop for a long time. And it was the renewal year for your financial aid. And when the renewal year came in, I was able to change up some things based on my income because I was no longer working. I wasn't making any money and I was able to put those things on the um, FAFSA. So the lady, they had a new director for the, a new director for the school, a new director for the school had took over the um, school and it was a private school y'all and um, took over the school and she said, you got a refund coming to you. And I said, I got a refund coming to me. Corinne, you know that you was there. Corinne is a, a, is a friend of mine. She was actually there when I got the check. The check was for $4,700, y'all. It was only going to cost $1,500 to get my car at the shop. When I tell you God is good, he will make a way when you don't even know how you're going to get that money. I didn't have a job. I'm like, how am I going to get this money? I'm staying with a friend. I ain't got no money to give her. I'm trying to get a job at the convenience store. I'm trying to get through school. I, I was struggling. I was struggling. And I'm telling you, that money came right on time. I got my car back in good condition and fixed and the body work done on it and everything. I was able to, you know, give my friends some money for helping me out, for staying with her. I was able to get the job at, um, you know, get the job as a GPN and make, you know, a decent wage and be able to pay, um, enough, pay my friend rent and things like that and save money to get my own place. I mean, I went from just like not having 
to God giving me everything I need. He equipped me with everything I needed. And that's how I know I'm equipped with everything I need right now. I'm equipped with everything I need right now. And that's why I want to just tell you, don't ever give up. Don't ever stop believing in what you can achieve. Don't ever stop. Don't ever start doubting yourself because of the fact that you don't have the money, the finances. You don't know how you're going to do it. You don't need to know how you're going to do it. You just need to have faith that it's going to get done. And it will get done, y'all. It will get done. Man, y'all about to make me cry tonight. I'm telling y'all because I'm telling you, these are some stories that I be sharing with some girlfriends. And they be like, girl, you didn't be saying that stuff on the channel, honey. <laughs> But you know what? I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful. And I just know that God is going to do so many more wonderful things for me and my husband and the old people I love and care about. That it's, just, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So with that being said, Double M's, I'm going to tell you guys, have a good evening. Make sure you comment. Make sure you get in them comments now. Because it ain't going to hurt nothing to say nothing. It ain't going to hurt nothing to share this video either, okay? So Remember to like, subscribe, share the video, share the video. Ain't gonna hurt nothing to share nothing, all right? Until the next time, I love you guys. Bye.